I think some of you guys are also a little bit familiar with JSON, hopefully, more or less, some of you guys are. So hopefully it'll be a little bit more relevant. So basically what I'm going to go over in the talk is, um, the talk is mainly going to be about um, some of the different uh, usages, different specifications for using JSON. So like in XML, we have different usage of um, XML, like RSS, um, XSLT, um, XHTML, various things like that. So they're, you know, things that build upon XML. In JSON, we have the same thing. And then, so I'm going to go through those, and I'm also going to talk about some of the different tools. And so some of these things, JSON RPC is like a remote, uh, remote procedure call um, specification for JSON, kind of similar to SOAP in the XML world. Um, JSONP is a, a protocol for um, grabbing um, JSON data across domains. Um, JSPON is the um, protocol that I developed that um, makes definitions for using JSON with um, persistent data. And so this talk is going to be mainly focused around some of the stuff that I've worked on, obviously, because it's the stuff that I know the most about. It's all about you. It's, and it's all about me, really, you know, in the end. <laughs> so it's going to be um, a lot about um, how to interact with persistent, persistent data with using JSON. And then JSONT is a, is a transformation protocol, um, so it's kind of analogous to XSLT. JSONR is a, a protocol for defining um, val validity of data, making a contract for validity of data, kind of like what you do with DTDs or X, X schemas. schemas. Yeah. And so and some of these, the, these are some tools that I've developed to work with these different um, protocols of JSON. And I'll get into those in the talk. So just a little introduction. This isn't intended to be like JSON tutorial. Um, I'm kind of assuming a little bit of background in JSON, but those that are observing this talk. Um, but just briefly, you know, JSON is um, a format where you can have objects, arrays, and different primitives, and you can mix them together. And objects are basically a, a comma delimited, comma separated list of name value pairs. Um, arrays are just comma separated values. Strings are in quotations, and uh, you can have booleans and numbers. Um, and it follows very much the paradigms of how you um, how you make primitives in um, most programming languages, Java, JavaScript, and so forth. And so it's it's very easy to read, um, and it's actually was built from the object initialization syntax in JavaScript. So it's it's actually built for defining data structures, object oriented data structures. And so it's very well equipped for that. It's very simple to use for that type of thing. Whereas XML um, XML was built around, it was, it's derived from SGML, right? So it's a markup language. And so it, it, was, it is built for the purpose of giving semantic meaning and structure to documents. So having what would otherwise be text and actually giving meaning and structure to those, that text. And so it's, it's kind of built for a little bit different purpose. And so um, I'm kind of poking a little bit of fun with this because it's kind of like way bigger. <laughs> But anyway, it, it, is, it does take more space to define things with XML. And when you're actually trying to define um, data that's in the shape of like object-oriented data, it is a little bit more difficult. There's more things that you have to have to agree on about like how you're going to do certain object types and various things. But XML, on the other hand, is much more well-equipped for doing the things that it was designed for. And there's also just tons of legacy uses of XML that we can't just go away from, obviously. Um, you know, if you're making a newsreader, you can't just decide you're not going to use RSS. Um, so, but I don't want to get too much into XML versus JSON just because it's kind of a, a religious topic for a lot of people. And so, um, but basically, um, they each have different strengths based upon where they came from and their heritage. Um, so, but the reason I want to talk about some of the different um, specifications built upon JSON is it's using these specifications really um, provides a lot of value as far as interoperability. Um, using these different specifications to solve your problems means you can use existing tool sets and you can work with other um, consumers and suppliers of the data um, that implement these same specifications. So there's a lot of value in using these existing formats. Um, and it's not like a slam on JSON. JSON has a lot of flexibility. It just doesn't define how to do or, you know, remote method calls or, or whatever, whatever you're working with. Um, but using these allows us to to be able to interoperate without building a whole new custom design. And so, once again, they're analogous to a lot of the things that have been built in the XML world. 
So I'm going to briefly go through some of these. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time. It's kind of just a brief look at some of these, each of these different things for this first half. JSON-T, um, once again, is a transformation protocol. And basically what you can do is take something like this, where you have um, a data structure. Um, this data structure has, is, um, has a link and has two properties, the URI and a title. And what we can do is take this transformation and transform this data structure into an HTML href. And so it's kind of similar to what you would do with XSLT to convert um, a data structure into, um, often you're converting it into HTML. That's usually one of the main uses of it. And so that's what JSON-T does. One of the things that's kind of cool about it is I was looking at the implementation of it, and it's like two kilobytes to implement it in JavaScript. And it's like pretty powerful. Like you can do things where you're having iterators that iterate through arrays. Um, you can have different levels of um, property dereferencing. And it can be implemented. Two kilobytes of JavaScript is pretty cool. JSON-R is a, is a um, format. Um, it it hasn't, doesn't seem to have gotten real popular. But it's a format for um, you know, providing a contract about what is valid data. And so it's basically one of the key things is just defining that um, certain fields are uh, either numbers or strings or booleans. Um, in this case, one of the ways that it works is we can say by providing a number, we can say that any, uh, the property field should always be a number. And the number is the maximum value for it. Um, and then for strings, the value that you provide is a regular expression that validates the string. And so in this case, um, and one of the main use cases of this is for validating forms. So let's say we had a form with these five fields. Um, the JSONR can be applied and say, you know, the name has to be one character or more. Um, this value has to be a Boolean. And the mail to um, value has to match this regular expression. And the age has to be less than 25. And then they also use null to indicate that it can be value, anything is acceptable. JSON RPC is a, it's a popular um, approach for doing remote procedure calls. Um, it's very, very simple. Um, basically, you make requests and responses. Um, and a request basically consists of three, three properties. The method name, just a string denoting what method you're going to call. A parameter, params, which is a list of the parameters to pass. And an ID, which allows you to match up a request with a response. Um, I've been doing a little bit of work with SOAP recently, and it's amazing to see how simple this is compared to the great complexity of SOAP. It's amazing. Anyway, and you can do a lot with JSONRPC. And so anyway, the response object basically has three properties. The result, which is what got returned from that call, or um, an error. Um, if there's an error, the result should be null, and there should be an error object, and that just is a, a string that defines what the error was. And then the ID, which allows you to match up the request and response. What's the endpoint look like on like uh, the other side of the? So you have your RPC client, right? Like what what does the code look like? No, on the other side, on the server side, what does that? Well, um, look like. Well, which is regular JSON RPC. What you would have to do is you have to like you have to have like a list of what each of these are going to call. So like in this example, we're going to call method echo. Method echo. And so we have to have a definition on the server of when echo is called, you're going to call actually call this method. Okay. And so, and then, so let's say we had an echo that just took the first parameter and returned the value. Um, so in this situation, a client might send this request to the server, and method echo params hello JSON or RPC ID of one, and then the server would execute that that method, and then it could return this result.